You recently gave a speech in Washington around the Dakota Access Pipeline. Yep. Um, <clears throat> what can you do right now? It seems, I want to ask a question about the peaceful transition of power that President Obama has been talking about. I thought that meant that people won't take up arms in this period. But it does seem to be that even proposals that would be put forward now, we just came from Morocco, the UN Climate Summit, the US pulled back on plans it was going to put forward there, <clears throat> that to ease the transition, they will go, the Obama administration will go in the direction of a Trump administration. Now on the Dakota Access Pipeline, President Obama, who visited Standing Rock in 2014, I think the only Native American reservation he visited with Michelle Obama, they had a powwow, they met the children. It was quite amazing. So he knows the Standing Rock tribe in North Dakota. After the video of the dogs came out that we filmed Labor Day weekend, dogs with their nose and mouths dripping with blood from biting the Native American water protectors, they were unleashed by the pipeline guards. President Obama returned from Asia, and when a judge ruled on behalf of the company, three, uh, 15 minutes later, an unprecedented three-agency letter came out from the Army, from the Interior, and Justice, and said, we're gonna, we are not going to issue this final permit. But the latest we've heard this week is the Army Corps of Engineers says people have got to get off the property. What can you do as a senator, even in this time of the peaceful transition of power? I, I, I trust that most people here know about the Dakota Access Pipeline. Um, the issues are threefold, and I'll tell you what we are trying to do. And I think your description of the situation is, is, is correct. Uh, Number one, we're dealing with uh, sovereignty rights for Native American people, an invasion of their own property, and violation of treaty rights, which is an endemic problem in this country. Uh, number two, you're talking about an area where if the pipe burst, water, clean water that goes to millions of people in that region uh, could be severely impacted at a time when we're all concerned about the amount of clean water that we have. Uh, and thirdly, and most importantly, perhaps, you're talking about whether or not we should be in any way supporting a pipeline which is piping in filthy oil at a time when we need to transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energy. So those are the three issues there. I think uh, what we have done is, number one, uh, demanded that the president do what he did with Keystone. A lot of people put a lot of pressure on the president, and he finally did the right thing, and that is to kill the Keystone Pipeline, which, by the way, under a Trump may be reopened again. Uh, but that is what he should be doing. And certainly, the demand must go to the North Dakota authorities that the kind of military presence that exists there is simply not what is acceptable. So we have written to the president. We are going to continue to put pressure on the president uh, to do everything he, can, everything he can to protect the Native Americans in the area uh, and the protesters in the area. Let me ask